Tell me a little bit about maybe one or two things that stands out to you when you look back at your experiences that stands out to you about the HWC program. Um, I would say the lab time, the experiential time practicing, and that that's when I figured out what coaching actually was because I thought it was more about like education when I first started and um, I was actually really happy to find out that it was more than that and it's about partnering with clients and helping them to reach their health and wellness goals and their um, dream and personal vision for themselves. Learning more about motivational interviewing and what to do with clients when they're really stuck and <laughs> they don't know what to do with themselves and you don't know what to do with them but suddenly you have all these new tools that can actually help them keep moving forward yeah that's that's interesting you know i have a background in, in health education as well and that's one of the things that i've always thought about in my background in health education is that we know knowledge alone does not produce behavior change in and of itself, right? If a person is kind of stuck in that behavior change process, it's really it's really hard for them sometimes to discover their own agency to move forward. And like you said, that's that's one of the really cool things about coaching is that in a coaching program, we help students establish those skill sets and those strategies that really help facilitate that agency for that client and allow them to really kind of take control and realize, you know, what they're ready to change and how they want to go about changing it. And as you mentioned, we we help facilitate that process. The environment that coaching creates is something I've been, um, makes me kind of emotional. <laughs> it, it's something I had been looking for for like my whole life because I never felt safe in groups. And um, finally, it was safe. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, and that's that that's that true compassion and that healing presence that we bring into a group as a coach that's been trained through MUIH. You know, I mean that that that's such a great point. Many circumstances, a person is really they're very aware of the changes that they need to make, right? But sometimes yeah. when we're thinking about our health or our behavior related to our health, there's a certain amount of shame and guilt and frustration and uh, a little bit of of you know kind of self-doubt that's all wrapped up in that process and when you're not in an environment where you feel safe that you can share that and talk about how that's related to kind of the barrier of change it's really difficult to change and so that's a great point that you bring up because i think that's one of the things that through our healing presence and our practice that we have you know, for coaches that come through our, our program is that we really help them understand that process of making sure there's a there's that altruistic compassion and that non-judgmental approach that we take to really welcome the client in and to let them know that they're safe and that sometimes talking about behavior change or talking about the things that we're somewhat ashamed of, maybe that we're doing or that we wish we could change and that we struggle with, many times that's the first hurdle in that behavior change process, right? It's it's becoming comfortable in that situation. So um, I'm glad you brought it up. I think there's a lot of people that have that similar. Yeah. I, I've had that similar experience myself, uh, you know, coaching and going through coaching. So it's a it's a great thing to hear that goes on. So listen, it kind of makes me think of something else. These are mm -hmm. some pretty deep, uh, robust topics, right? And that's something that a lot of times when you see graduate level app, uh, you know, graduate level education that it is different uh, than undergraduate. We really have to dig in. We have a lot of critical thinking, a lot of deep thinking, a lot of deep reflection. So that kind of brings me to the next question of when you thought about moving into, you know, a post undergraduate work, so like a postgraduate program or graduate level program, how did you prepare for that challenge? And what were some of the things that you've done personally that helped you become successful through that process? Yeah, um, I I think for me, since this was my second graduate program, I reflected on my first one and how I would um, plan what I would do to, to fit in all the studying. Kind of, um, I guess it'd be time blocking is what some people call it. 
and um, blocking that time out in your calendar. And I would also say it wouldn't be possible if you don't have support. Yeah. Um, I couldn't have done it. <laughs> I couldn't have done it without my parents um, helping me and talking me <laughs> through it. Like sometimes I'd call them and be like, oh, this is getting way too hard. <laughs> I don't yeah. know if I can yeah. do this anymore. <laughs> and <laughs> they'd um, talk me down. <laughs> <laughs> so um, I guess to know you have those people in place like as you're starting the program is a very good idea. <laughs> um, even if it's not family, if it's like a close friend or mm -hmm. someone from work even that um, just listens a lot. <laughs> I think having someone that listens is important, but that's what coaching is too. So then once you're in the program, you have your classmates or, well, <laughs> I'm not sure if all the cohorts were as close as mine, but um, we would text each other, oh, this is really hard. Do you think this is hard or is it just in my head? <laughs> like, uh, yeah. um, the, the mutual suffering, I don't know if I'd call it suffering, but it was <laughs> learning well. Um, <laughs> um, moving yourself forward and sometimes it did feel like suffering. <laughs> And uh, then it wouldn't feel as bad to know that you're not doing it by yourself. Mm -hmm. I think that's really good insight um, that I would agree with you. That's probably one of the biggest things that I see that's important for graduate level education is to really have support systems, but not only have them, but use them. Because I've seen students that they'll have those support systems, but they won't kind of rely on them. And it's OK to rely on those support systems because that's ultimately why they're there. And we even talk about that in coaching. You know, that's an element that we talk about, like it's important to have support around you. And so really, I think that's a that's a really good point. When students come to MUIH and they go through our post baccalaureate certificate program, our master's program, they're looking for that professional credentialing, right? That credential from the National Board of Health and Wellness Coaching and or the International Coaching Federation so they can go out and practice as, as a credential coach. What is something about our program that you feel like or how did the program in its entirety prepare you for professional credentialing? Hmm. Well, I think there's a lot of parts to this answer. So um, I think that the preparation for the exam really starts in the first semester when um, you're learning the different parts for competency three, health and wellness, and um, learning how to find the information on your own and where to find it. But then it continues in the, the coaching classes, especially with the labs and um, having the lab time and then in the class reading about how to do what they're talking about in the lab and then writing posts about it and doing lots of reflection about what you're doing in the lab and i think um, reflection on how you coach is very important to keep growing mm -hmm. and um, getting better as a coach and um I guess the third part would be the the class on becoming a healing presence and also the mindfulness and meditation class, because I think those two classes helped me pass not just the coaching board exam, but the nutrition certified nutrition specialist exam that I passed while I was in the healthy coaching program um, last year in December. And um, because I am someone that has a lot of test anxiety, and so learning daily meditation practices um, helped me beat my test anxiety. <laughs> and I didn't really think it was possible before <laughs> learning those things. <laughs> yeah, that's great. I, I appreciate it. I mean, because that's, that's a, a big part of it for a lot of people. 
is that there is some test anxiety that go into these big national credentialing exams. Uh, but the practice that you get and the people that you work with, I think, can reduce some of that apprehension. And again, going back to what you said earlier, just the support can make a big difference as you move in and you get ready to take those exams. Mm -hmm. So our learning community, you, you've kind of mentioned this already. You know, we, when you get into our, our program, there's a learning community and that community includes, of course, your faculty, your mentor coaches and your peers. Thinking about that learning community when you went through that experience, what was one of the things that you liked most about the learning community that we offer um, at MUH and the HWC program? Um, well, when when the faculty and the mentors say they're there to help you, they do mean it. <laughs> and whenever you reach out to them, they'll get back to you as soon as they can. And um, I remember in my second semester, I had a kind of a personal emergency and I was really worried about how <laughs> the faculty would respond and if I'd have to like drop out or postpone <laughs> the program, but they um, extended my assignments just a little bit and that's all I really needed. So what was one of your favorite classes in, in the program and, and what did you take away from it? Um, all of them, <laughs> no, <laughs> but I could say that really because I think I did get a lot of things from each class. Uh, some that stand out would be like I was talking about earlier, the mindfulness and meditation class and becoming a healing presence. Because, um, because of those classes, I don't think about things the same way. I have a different mindset and I don't have to be stressed out about everything all the time. <laughs> but I would also say the last two advanced coaching classes for group coaching and then advanced practices and tools, um, learning those things, it sets you apart. Since you've been through the program, what advice would you have for maybe the current students that are in the program? And what advice might you have for prospective students that are looking into the program? Meet with other students as soon as possible, <laughs> because the sooner you start building the connections, the better it is, really. And um, me and some other people in my cohort are still meeting on a fairly regular basis to talk about business things and coaching in general. So, um, and practice coaching on each other. And we yeah. also helped each other with um, studying for the NBHWC exam. Yeah, which I think is really so critical, you know, being able to continue those relationships uh, and prepare for that credentialing exam is really good. Again, it's, it's more enjoyable a lot of times when you don't have to prepare long. Um, it sometimes is more thorough. You know, it gives you an opportunity to look at things maybe through a different, slightly different lens. Um, so I think what you're doing in this, and you know, that you're continuing those relationships is absolutely fabulous and that you're giving that suggestion to current students and, and prospective students that might listen to this will realize that coming into the program, one of the very first things to do is establish yourself in that cohort. Um, one of the things that I do, Carissa, when I talk on, I do our webinars, you know, for pers prospective students, I always talk about, uh, from my perspective, one of the things that really can help you be a good graduate student is to be engaged, right? And that's exactly what you're talking about. Be engaged, you know, be engaged with your faculty and your, and your cohort. What's your next professional journey as it relates to health and wellness coaching? Since I just passed the national board um, test and July and officially got credentialed in August. I've been more serious about launching my business for real, for real, <laughs> instead of just like doing yeah, good for you, things, good for you. Um, doing the things in the practice management class, but I am using a lot of the things we did. Um, even though I am changing my niche from just bone loss for postmenopausal women to um, chronic pain management for all women, adult women, I should say. Um, and I feel like bone loss fits in there still, um, but it's also 
a lot of other conditions and it's not it's not as narrow of a scope. Um, but it's still specific. Um, because it includes things like fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue syndrome, but then also digestive things, which I learned a lot about as a nutritionist. <laughs> so um, like irritable bowel syndrome and inflammatory bowel disease, um, and also gastroesophageal reflux disease and arthritis and <laughs> um applying all of those things to my myself um because through the two programs it's been a healing journey for me for starting with digestive wellness <laughs> and um moving to um i guess more joints and muscle pain um because during the nutrition program, I tore my hip muscle and had surgery and recovered from that. And um, I want to walk with people on their journey to healing. Mm -hmm. I don't think people should have to do it alone like I did. <laughs> um, and be told that it's in their head because it's not, even if it is chronic pain. It just means your brain has learned the response and it's lighting up different areas of your brain than acute pain. It's, yeah. not, it's not just in your head, though. <laughs> right. Yeah. And it's great how that comes full circle when I'm listening to you, how you bring support back into that process. Right. Like people that are going through or, or dealing with chronic pain uh, that you don't have to do it on your own. Thus the support. Right. That's the again, the thing. One of the things that we teach not only when you're going through the program as a student, but an elemental piece to being a good coach, right, is being there to provide that support as that person deals with whatever they're dealing with, and, and it supports that change process. When you think about the program in, in and of itself overall, like, how has it changed your mindset, or has it? Yeah, I think it has a lot, because um, I don't feel like I'm as anxious Learning that you can always rewire your brain, you always have the ability to unlearn, I guess I'll call them bad behaviors or negative ways of doing things, thoughts, and you can change that thinking to be more compassionate to yourself and your clients. And the, the healing that you do it's important because if you do that journey on yourself, then you're more authentic working with your clients. Yeah, that, and that's that's so powerful. I think you're exactly right. I mean, one of the things that is important for us all, whether we're a coach or we're a client, because to some degree, we're all clients, right? I mean, we we all move through this process of change or our life changes and we move through different stages of life and we deal with different things that life has to present to us, right? And the way in which we think about those things, the way in which we embrace those things really has a lot to do with our overall well-being and our quality of life. And it's so powerful to hear you talk about how the program has allowed you to kind of have that shift in that mindset. Um, and I think that's part of what our program looks at beyond just the kind of the nuts and bolts of, OK, you've got to learn this skill set and you've got to practice this skill set. But it really gives you that time to kind of have some self-reflection and see where you are in that process. And like you said, I think doing that really allows us to be better coaches when we get out and we start practicing. So I really appreciate your time. Uh, congratulations on your graduation and your current passing of the uh, MBHWC exam. So you're now uh, officially a board certified MBCHWC coach. 
and best of luck getting out there and establishing that business and moving us forward. I mean, I always say that there's a lot of healing that needs to go on in the world, and you're going to be one of those people who actively contribute to it. So I'm really grateful for that, and I'm grateful that you came through our program and that you took the time to visit with me today. Yeah, thank you for letting me share.